What's up, Divine co-creators of reality? This is your soul once again, bringing you some COVID-19 news, unfortunately. Uh, I wanted to make a video earlier on today. Stories just kept piling up, and it's really got um, quite epic today, the number of stories that have come across my uh, desktop. So I'm just going to quickly take you through a tour of some of what I've seen. First of all, allegedly, a leak has surfaced on Twitter being shared about. And it alleges to include a long list of logins for servers from the World Health Organization, the Gates Foundation, and some of the Wuhan labs alleged to be involved in engineering the virus that's now been called COVID-19. So um, if you are quick, you may still be able to find these logins online. I, for one, I'm not going to be logging into their servers because I don't want any trouble. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a long list of other people doing that and releasing data if it's available at some point anyway. Uh, this image you're looking at here is one that um, is dated from February from an anonymous chat board and claims, to, I, I think the idea here is that this is meant to be, um, this message is meant to be based on data from those hacks and whether or not this turns out to be true, we won't know for a little while I guess, but as we can see here, it says here that on the 19th of October, Dr. Sheng Li Shi took a bus from Wuhan's Institute of Technology to the real location of the P4 lab, roughly 16 miles away. So that's referring to biosafety level 4 lab, basically used to work on bioweapons in Wuhan. And uh, she's one of the people who has written studies, publicly known, um, tying together research on bat coronaviruses, SARS and pseudo-HIV, alleging, well, basically dis describing how they made a chimera virus with so-called gain-of-function ability, meaning that they took parts of SARS, HIV, and um, bat coronavirus, combined them to make a super powerful deadly virus, and uh, that's apparently work that she was working on. So, um, some evidence that this has been funded by the US government as well. Uh, but it's saying here that she stopped one time halfway through her journey, opened a suitcase and placed a block of contaminated dry ice near an air vent at the fish market in question. This would be in Wuhan. This particular market was chosen because it's the same building, is in the same building as, uh, as hub of the world's largest high-speed rail network, and because it was not outside of her regular route of travel. The event was captured on CCTV. So, obviously, I don't know whether this is true or not. If we have a look at the um, map, basically, Google Maps, to go from the fish market, so-called wet market, to where they class the nearest train station as being, uh, it's roughly about half a kilometre away. Um, so initially I was questioning that, but if you look on the uh, Wikipedia page for that station, it actually specifically says um, the station's location near to the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market may have contributed to the spread of the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus too. Uh, so it was closed pretty quickly to prevent that making things worse. So, you know, could be legit. It's definitely something to keep your eye on, and I imagine that more information will be forthcoming soon on that. Next story. Uh, amid pandemic, Hong Kong arrests major pro-democracy figures. So people have been pointing out for a long time how convenient it was that during the uh, major um, public revolt, let's say, against the Chinese government in certain regions, uh, now that the COVID-19 event transpired, they were basically forced to all shut down their... Um, defiance of the Chinese government, let's say, and now during this lockdown the government has moved to arrest some fairly well-known characters apparently in Hong Kong, um, including entrepreneurs and uh, media characters who had been speaking out in favour of freedom, ultimately. So this is something that people were warning would probably happen, and it appears that it has happened. News from literally 10 minutes ago, um, UK government claims to be about to start testing coronavirus vaccines, despite the fact that even their own top specialist in these previous briefings had said there's really no chance of having a vaccine available for at least a year or two years, suddenly they have a vaccine to trial. Now, obviously, having something to trial doesn't mean to say it's going to work. They might end up going through 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 versions before they find something that actually works, or maybe they never will find something that works. But slightly curious to me that they are talking about testing these vaccines so quickly and also relevant to me and to people who pay attention to my previous blogs and the work of James Corbett and numerous other people will note that Oxford University is the main hub identified by the work of Ivy League historian Carol Quigley back in the 1960s. He wrote his epic book, Tragedy and Hope, exposing um, 
Well, it's difficult to say uh, in a short space of time what he was exposing, and it will might probably be sounding a bit crazy to people who haven't looked into it, but this was a very well-renowned and respected historian in the 60s, and he had access to secret documents from the files of uh, a secret society, which he identified as the network, and he basically was meant to be writing a book for them, not for public um, dissemination about their own history and somehow or other he ended up publishing it through penguin books and then it was pulled after about nine months most people have never read it it was a massive book it got republished not so long ago and it's still a massive book and the the real dynamite information is about five percent at the back which lays out their plan to take um a massive amount of wealth uh originally um stemming from cecil rhodes's rhodes foundation basically stolen from raping africa a long time ago um I've made some posts about this in the past, I'm not going to go too deeply into this, but the bottom line is they are a eugenics-based kind of group. Their their mission is to um, very much make sure that white Anglo-Saxon men are dominating the planet, and he exposed that pretty well, and includes the Astor family and various other ones. And one of the photos that I shared recently is one where you can see this Dr. Fauci, who is a so-called expert in American viruses, basically stood only a few feet away from people like George Soros and one of the Astor family. Um, so, yeah, very important information. Also stood next to um, Bill Gates's father, who was head of Planned Parenthood, uh, which has been identified as being the offshoot and ongoing project based from the eugenics associations from previous generations. So this is pretty good evidence. I mean, obviously, the fact that this vaccine comes out of Oxford doesn't prove anything, but just a data point, you know, that this is where this stuff's coming out of, and that is the city identified as being um, the head home base of that group next slide <laughs> so we have here uh lady gaga Mar maria abramovich i believe that's how her name is pronounced um here at one of their events and you know she to all accounts is very much into satanic type luciferian occult rituals and so there are lots of images of her and stories relating to her use of basically babies covered in blood and writing kind of perverse text on walls written in blood and clearly involved in, at the very least, mock satanic rituals. And I've never really heard a good explanation from her as to why she was doing that if she's not into Satanism. So you can see this image here, um, and this is extremely relevant for many reasons. Number one, she was just in a Bill Gates uh, Microsoft advert for Microsoft's virtual reality systems, which had to be pulled because hundreds, of, well, many thousands of people at least, uh, we're writing comments under it and accusing Bill Gates of crimes against humanity and so on. There's a, a petition currently with over 300,000 signatures asking for him to be investigated by the US government for, um, you know, so-called crimes against humanity in relation to his attempting to seemingly force vaccination on millions of people. That's a whole thread in itself, which I'm not going to dive into here. There's lots being written on that already. Um, but clearly Microsoft and Bill Gates working with her. And Lady Gaga, it turns out, her mother is an ambassador for the World Health Organization, which I just found out today, uh, promoting health around the world, quote unquote. And this piece here, you know, very much connects into uh, the director. Um, I believe this was a speech given by Tedros, the uh, Ethiopian ex-terrorist, uh, apparently, um, involved in allegedly covering up various um, cholera epidemics and so on in Ethiopia in the past. Very controversial figure. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... Again, is this all coincidence or, you know, are we just, do we just need a brain and, you know, 10 minutes to draw the dots here? This female works with Bill Gates. Bill Gates heavily involved in trying to get everyone tracked and saying that we can't have free movement on this planet and removing implied rights of free movement and so on uh, until we've had a vaccination and he's heavily funding groups making vaccinations. Um, he's hired her to do work um, and the lady stood next to her, Lady Gaga so-called um ultimately her, her mother works for the world health organization and this guy this terrorist guy apparently uh, alleged terrorist let's say um inviting her into the world health organization so let's have a look at some other links relating to all of this well this is something that came across my desk recently uh this is a patent registered by microsoft uh and you can see down here wherever it is microsoft technology licensing and this is, I've read through most of this, it, it basically is a pattern describing a way of using cryptocurrency to connect into any form of scanning device that can scan the human body. So measuring magnetic fields, blood flow, even thought 
waves and emotional frequencies, uh, effectively allowing them to connect up any activity that happens in the human body to a blockchain and a cryptocurrency for, for finance. So they're literally monetizing bodily processes. And this is a pattern that Microsoft's actually registered. And, you know, people who have looked scanned over this have said, oh, don't be silly, this is just a way of, um, you know, people earning cryptocurrency tokens for doing exercise, a bit like ActiveFit and some of these other ones. But no, uh, th this is a much bigger pattern than that. This literally allows them to control and own any system which, um, or at least license, own the license to any system which monetizes bodily activity, is the bottom line. So it even describes a mechanism for converting thought frequencies into hash, ta um, hash data which could be used and checked to be within certain parameters. So if they were to define what a certain thought frequency was for a certain topic, let's say a happy emotion and a sad emotion, and they even give the examples of using this in relation to advertising. So, for example, it's not impossible that they could have a situation where you get rewarded if you have a certain emotional response to certain advertising. I mean, that sounds insane, uh, like something from sci-fi uh, or horror movie, but this is basically what this pattern describes, more or less, and it wouldn't be too much of a stretch of the imagination to... Um, to imagine that being deployed in a fairly near future. So, you know, you've got a situation where Bill Gates is basically pressing the world to be locked at home, can't leave without a vaccine that he's paying to have developed, and meanwhile they're developing systems to monetize people's activity at home. So, you know, anything, basically, isn't it? Oh, well, you can't get to work? Oh, we'll earn our cryptocurrency for just watching TV adverts. It's not. It's really not that much of a stretch of the imagination. That's pretty much what they're describing. Uh, there's another pattern here um, from them. Symbiotic biological systems as platforms for sensing, production, and intervention. I haven't read every single word in this, but the bottom line of this is that they're talking about using um, developed uh, viruses, effectively, as a means of um, delivering uh, genetic material into the human body and then using their technology to improve on that. So this is Microsoft, you know, the company that makes Windows. So they've gone from developing... Um, operating systems and standard computing technology to trying to work directly with the immune system of people's bodies and integrating them in with technology, another pattern. Interesting. All right, well, another story about the World Health Organization. They spend more money on travel costs than fighting AIDS, according to the New York Post. So there's been reporting on how much money um, the World Health Organization receives from various sources for their various programs. Donald Trump has now with withdrawn funding from the World Health Organization because he said they were too China-centric bowing down to China, bearing in mind that Tedros, the head of the um, World Health Organization, was basically a communist in, in Ethiopia, as I understand it, and the Chinese government is communist. Uh, maybe Donald Trump has a point. And w one of the biggest funders of the World Health Organization is Bill Gates, once again, another name popping up, same guy. Uh, and it's saying here that going into the details of the massive amounts of funds and that the World Health Organization spends on its own cronies to fly around the world, and it says here, the Director General, Dr. Mark Chan, racked up $370,000 travel bill in one year, and recently stayed in a $1,008 a night hotel in Guinea. So, yeah, hardly the actions of a group who have the world health in mind, and far more the actions of a group who are entirely grandiose and basically taking the piss in English language. Um, you know, that money could have easily been spent on helping people's health, but clearly they thought that wasn't so important. It's much more important that they stay in the world's most expensive hotels, apparently. Next slide, tab. Um, a link here from Collective Evolution. Vimeo bans the documentary exposing Big Pharma's influence within the World Health Organization. Now, I didn't watch this documentary. I'd never heard of it before, but um, it was called Trust Who, and apparently they pulled it. And if you watch this video on here, the uh, creator of that film describes how um, Vimeo basically removed it due to one of their standard policy declarations that they won't allow footage or documentaries relating to anything that challenges vaccine safety or vaccine, the sort of logic that vaccines are safe and effective. Oh no, you can't talk about science that disagrees with the mainstream view, sorry. Um, and this video from the filmmaker shows that actually, uh, as far as he's concerned, they had lawyers look through this, they even had people from the World Health, Org World Health Organization themselves check over the content of that documentary and confirm that it was fine and there wasn't a problem for them. Yet Vimeo somehow decided to um, block it, like they have blocked numerous other sources of information uh, related to COVID-19 and so have YouTube and Facebook and so on.
So we come on to Facebook and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, here's a story from Breitbart. Lockdown protests are, quote, misinformation and Facebook will ban the organisers. So these uh, uh, kind of groupings, organisations that have happened in America, basically protesting being locked down for the COVID-19 situation. People with machine guns stood together basically on uh, town hall steps and, and those kind of places in America, defending the constitutional rights that they perceive to be being breached by these rules, which arguably they are. Um, Facebook stepped in and said, no, we won't allow these kinds of meetings to be organised on Facebook because they are harmful misinformation. I'm not quite sure how organising to defend constitutional rights could be classed as misinformation, but... Okay, so interesting. I would suggest, as usual, don't use Facebook. It doesn't have your best interests in mind. It is basically a control system and spying system. Uh, they're much better alternatives to social networking. And interesting that Donald Trump apparently posted numerous tweets in favour of supporting the protesters, saying that people should liberate their states from this lockdown, uh, inferring that he's not in favour of the lockdown and he views them as being um, in breach of people's rights, which is an interesting situation since... In other messages, he seems to be somewhat in favour of it. Um, so I don't know if he's confused or just trying to divide people. I'm not sure, but interesting, you know, to see the President of the United States openly supporting people who question the activities of his own government on such a level um, and state governments. So, yeah, what do we make of all of this? Well, there's many more stories that, that I could have covered even just from the last 48 hours that connect all this stuff together, but... I think when, if this, if and when these leaks come out, if they are real, we're we're going to see a huge wealth of information coming out from there um, that may totally change the situation. And hopefully, I will, you know, these these sorts of links and leaks and data will inspire people to go and do their own research and stop blindly believing what they're being told by mainstream narratives. I'm not saying that there is no virus. I'm not saying that we don't need to take steps to be safe and so on. But uh, there are definitely agendas at play which are allowing certain entities to try to take advantage of the situation for their own agenda, whether it be financial or control or political gain. Um, and I've covered some of that before previously, so have numerous other people. I'm still banned from posting on Facebook under normal in the normal way uh, because they claim I'm a Nazi, even though nothing I've ever written has been pro-Nazi. And actually, the information that they've identified as being evidence for that is actually me posting anti-Nazi uh, material. So... Please do check my video out on that. It seems to me that they've done this to lots of people who are speaking out, sharing information against the current government narrative when the information being shared is actually scientific in nature and entirely valid, and they've got no other way of shutting us down but to invent false claims. Um, so this is a big deal as far as I'm concerned. I'm kind of used to it. You know, you might think that I'm not angry about it and I seem a bit calm, but it's because I've been putting up with this stuff for years and you know, I'm past that whole stage of getting angry about it. I'm just... You know, I know this is how it is. I know they shut down free speech and I know that they will always do everything they can to um, actually take action to hurt people, ultimately, when it comes to sharing information about health. I mean, there are many doctors uh, and professors and researchers speaking out against the official government positions on, on the COVID-19 science and health advice. And some of them are very, very qualified, very skilled, very knowledgeable people. And uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me if they generally got taken down on Facebook. Some of them are expecting it. And, you know, this is not how you treat customers. This is not how you treat people who who you, who you really care for if you know what you're doing. The, this is how you limit free speech and limit the free flow of information. So please do come and check out, you know, uh, alternatives to Facebook like the Hive blockchain, uh, which used to be called Steam. Steam still exists, but Hive is actually much more decentralized than uh, Steam. It's a social network that's based on cryptocurrency. It doesn't connect into your blood flow like Microsoft wants things to be. It's just allows you to post and you get paid for posting so do come and check that out it's uncensored pretty much so um yeah much freer than facebook and other social networks like twitter definitely a place to be if you want to catch up with the most up-to-date news and uncensored information relating to important information such as covid19 and related issues uh so yeah do come and check me out there i'm on there as you're a soul you are a hyphen s-o-u-l and uh yeah leave a comment join subscribe and uh hang out and uh yeah, maybe together we're going to solve and improve some of the world's problems in more productive ways than these mainstream systems are going to do. As always, if you've watched all the way through to here, thanks for listening. And uh, please do give us a thumbs up, uh, uh, subscribe if you're new, and share along with everyone else. Leave a comment if you've got interesting inf insights or information. If you agree or disagree, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, until next time, peace.